everyone, and welcome back to another installment of Husker Hot Takes, a weekly show by the Daily Nebraskan in which I, Daily Nebraskan senior sports editor and football beat reporter Landon Wirt, speaks with a member of the Daily Nebraskan's general staff about all things Husker football. We're back, uh, which is good to note, following a chaotic last week that included lots of men's basketball and a football game um, that also did indeed happen, I guess. Um, so this week's guest is noted Christmas music enthusiast, oh. San Francisco sports fan, and Daily Nebraska news reporter, Chad Mays. Chad, welcome. Thank you. I'm excited to talk about Nebraska football and whatever that entails. Yeah, um, that makes one of us, <laughs> uh, because after covering this team for nine, ten weeks now, it appears that Nebraska football's ice is running extremely, extremely thin uh, for making a bowl game, sitting at 3-6 and six with three regular season games remaining against three ranked opponents. Ranked opponents that, under head coach Scott Frost's tenure, Nebraska has never beat. So, looking back last week, Nebraska loses to Purdue at home. Things are rolling in the first half, up 17-14, and then the wheels sort of just fall apart, for lack of a better word, in the second half. Uh, you were at the game, yes, uh, in the stands. So what were your thoughts on all of that that occurred uh, last Saturday in Memorial Stadium? They played okay in the first half, but I think the very first play should have been a telling for how that game was going to go with the with the almost pick six right at the beginning. Uh, but it's disappointing. I mean, I, that kind of has summed up this season, I feel like. It, there's been a lot of good moments where they look like, hey, we can, you know, we can take down this ranked opponent or we can – you know, have a shot to win this game, and then it all kind of crumbles down at the very end. Yeah, I certainly agree that that's been a takeaway, and yeah, it's it was one of the more underlying points that there could have been multiple pick sixes, believe it or not, on Saturday in a game really riddled with turnovers from a Nebraska perspective. Another one of the, the storylines uh, from this game was the fact that for a majority of the fourth quarter, Memorial Stadium was a ghost town. After Purdue scored a touchdown to go up, I believe it was... 11 points, uh, with 11 or so minutes left in the game, fans at Memorial Stadium began heading for the exits in droves, particularly in the student section. I posted a video to Twitter of Nebraska's late onside kick, and someone even noted in my comments, wow, the student section is a ghost town. What do you think um, about that whole deal, and did the student section and fans in general have a right to head for the exits as early as they did? Yes, um, I think so. Uh, obviously, Nebraska is known for having one of the best fan bases in, in college football and in American sports. And they do, but I think them leaving, it just sums up how they feel about the program right now. It's, it's empty. It, there's, not just, there's not a lot going to keep fans there. And instead of blaming the fans, maybe we should start, you know, maybe addressing that they, there needs to be a better football team for fans to stay. I mean, it's just kind of the, the simple fact that, you know, if, if the team is going to play better, the fans will stay. Yeah. It definitely is something interesting, at least from my perspective. I This is the first year I've covered Nebraska football with a full stadium, so it was definitely very, very interesting for me to see that and, and the Boo Birds that were out on certain occasions. Uh, it's a stark contrast from last year, just empty stadiums when Nebraska was playing well slash not well to the uglier side of things, which have happened more often than not at home games uh, this year, which has been really unfortunate. Speaking of home games, there are two of them left on Nebraska's schedule. Uh, upcoming this Saturday against Ohio State and then the Black Friday game against Iowa with a game against Wisconsin scheduled in the middle of that. So the first college football playoff rankings came out um, as we record this on Wednesday afternoon on Tuesday. And all three of Nebraska's remaining opponents are ranked, believe it or not. Uh, Wisconsin, Iowa, and Ohio State, of course, are all ranked in the top 25. So I wanted to ask you from a fan slash outsider's perspective, what can Nebraska football do over its last three games in order to instill some confidence and fan morale and optimism and all those lovely things uh, ahead of next season, potentially. I just think they need to show that they can hang with these teams, that they can, you know, they're not going to be favorites most likely in any of these games. Uh, I think that would be pretty fair to say. Yeah. But I think they need to show that they can still play good football. We've seen, you know, at times and play really well. Uh, and maybe, you know, oh, wow, there is a lot of optimism for this program. I just think they need to come out and play well. Uh, you know, show that they can still hang with these teams, and maybe they're just a couple pieces away that if they can add those in the coming offseason, that they can still be one of those, you know, bring them back to their premier days of football. But I just think hanging with them and, and showing fight, I think, is, is a big thing. Yeah, 
I definitely um, agree with that. It's certainly one has to wonder where this team's sort of at after you have this great stretch of play and now this not-so-great stretch of play against Minnesota and Purdue for sure. So fight is good. Maybe winning one of these close games would be even better on that front. Lastly, the elephant in the room, the big game this Saturday, big noon kickoff against Ohio State for the second consecutive year for the Huskers. Uh, I don't want to say what's the damage, but how do you think the game on Saturday will shake out? I think Nebraska is going to come out pretty strong, actually. I think they're going to feel like they have something to prove um, because they do. I feel like they do feel like they have to prove that they can still play good football. And I think they will play a solid, you know, couple first tries. And then I think Ohio State's going to fall into their rhythm and that'll kind of be it by (laughs) halftime. The Buckeyes certainly are um, a talented squad. It will be interesting. Nebraska is a little over a two-touchdown underdog uh, for this Saturday's contest at Memorial Stadium. Those are Chad's thoughts. You can hear what the Daily Nebraskan sports editors, myself, uh, Martin Hurz, and Jason Hahn, have to think about this game later on in the week in our editor score predictions. Spoiler alert, I can imagine there will probably be similar predictions in favor of Ohio State come Saturday, but like I've said, I've loved to be proven wrong, and I certainly do think Nebraska has a chance to make a statement on Saturday. That'll wrap things up for uh, this week's episode of Husker Hot Takes. Thank you so much, Chad, uh, for joining us, and we will see you next time.